Hey y'all, this is Joe here at the Mini Homestead in Wheeling and we're going to talk about some electric and why my house didn't burn down. I don't know why it didn't, but that's where the old box sat. The old meter socket and meter went through that hole. And what got replaced Friday was that meter socket is new. And this whole feed line is all new. All the way up. Well, somewhere I'm gonna fall off this little hill. There we go. To that weather head, which is new. Now, we didn't have a weather head before, which explains part of the problem. But that's all new, that all got replaced Friday. This is the old. That's the old meter socket and the old feed wire that was coming in so the reason it had to be replaced number one you can see the rust inside this meter socket and it's just from the years and years and years of water coming in and this is old not up to code anymore so it had to be replaced now the problem and what made me realize or made us realize it had to be replaced all these electrical problems we've been having and you see that you see all that corrosion well let me focus it again uh, that's all broken that's not cut there were a few strands that had to be cut the rest of it is all corroded that is the neutral wire. The other two wires are 120 volt wires that come in. That neutral is very important. It's not a ground like the ground wire. It helps the ground wire, but that carries a load. And I'll try to explain this. I'm not an electrician. Do not think you're going to take a test after I get done talking to you. Because I'll probably say things wrong. But I'll give it a shot here. That is my transformer. That's what I feed off of. And you see, there are three wires that run from it. They run down the line. <laughs> and they get to that point. And they come off of there to my house. running along these wires. Now the electric company is responsible for all of that. Once it reaches my house, I'm responsible for the rest of it. So what you get in those three wires is you have, they're called L1, L2, and N. And what you've got, like I said before, that's your neutral. That carries 120 volts. That carries 120 volts. So you've got 240 volts coming in, 120 off of each leg, and your neutral. What the neutral does in simple terms, this comes into your service panel here, and in here it's going to come out and go into your house, into your service panel. This is a meter socket. This ties into the meter here. It's going to come out, go into your house, and into your service panel. And in your breaker box, you've got two sides of, with your breakers. So you're going to have one side has 120 volts, the other side has 120 volts, 
and you have a neutral which goes on a bar. If I had a service panel sitting here, I could show you. But the neutral goes on a bar that is also connected to the ground that goes to the earth. Uh, the ground that goes to the earth is like more designed for like if lightning hit the house. It's a place for, for extra electricity to travel to go to the ground so it doesn't blow out all your appliances and stuff like that. It helps in that respect. What the neutral wire does in simple terms let's say on one side uh, your service panel you're pulling 5 amps and you're pulling 8 amps on the other side it takes the neutral wire takes extra amperage and balances out the two sides takes amps and sends it back to the transformer so that you don't overload things and you don't over uh, you know bring in too much power so in real simple terms, it sends amperage back to the transformer. So you've got your two 120s that come in. If you put a meter on these two wires, you'd get 120 volts. Put a meter on these two wires, you get 120 volts. If you did those two, you get 240 volts. But your house runs on 120, single phase 120. This just does two, both sides of your service panel and all your breakers have 120 volts. Then you have your neutral, which takes all the excess and runs it back up to uh, the transformer. And it kind of acts as a ground because it's, you know, attached to the ground. But it's not really your ground wire. It is a neutral wire. So what happened in my case with that being so corroded like it is, it had broken off and there was not enough wire left to carry a load back. And that thing, once a, a big enough load got on it, say the dryer was going and the oven was going and the refrigerator kicked on, that thing would be glowing hot it could glow red what's left of it and that's going up against the wood on in the house I mean it, it's you can see it's not uh, it doesn't have the insulated insulation on it like these other wires do like your two 120s are if I can find them <laughs> your two 120s are insulated but your neutral line isn't. So over the years, water has come down this not so watertight uh, meter socket. Because up at the top, there was no weather head, just some, some goop, you know, squirted in there to act like watertight. But over the years, water has run down that, that neutral line and corroded that wire. It's aluminum, so it corrodes anyway just from oxygen. But the water helped it. And you can see all of the rust inside this panel. And see where that thing was supposed to hook up at. And you can see how corroded it all is. So I had all of that heat going uh, up against the wood on the side of my house. That's why I say I, how it didn't burn down I have no idea. But my lights would dim. They would go bright. They would flicker. Uh, if you turned on too much stuff uh, we'd lose the internet. We'd lose cable. Because what was happening that extra electricity, the extra amps, had to go somewhere. Well, the closest thing it can find is your coaxial from cable. And it will run through that. And if it's just a little bit, it'll just interrupt the service. But I had so much going through, I blew out the cable lines. 
Uh, and it was so bad this time, it blew out the line from my house up to their line, their pole. Uh, they had to replace. And the scary thing is, the guy said it's not abnormal. They see it all the time. People's neutral lines go out and, you know, it tries to ground itself and it tries to, the coaxial for the cable company is designed to carry 120 volts before it blows up. Well, we melted it, <laughs> so <laughs> ours was really bad. I don't understand, and I had this rant a couple years ago when I thought AEP had kind of fixed the problem. They cleaned things up and, you know, helped us out for a while. But I had to go through this whole thing with the city, getting permits, getting inspections, getting power turned off. AEP wouldn't turn the power back on until there was a sticker on it that it passed inspection. Blah, blah. Well, all I was doing was replacing this meter socket and the wire that leads. To, that's all that got replaced. You know, and $50 for a permit, $120 for an inspector, $35 for AEP to come out and turn me off and turn me back on. It's like, I couldn't understand why I had to go through all that just to replace this. So, it's all done now. And uh, Comcast, we did this on Friday. Comcast came out yesterday, replaced the line from the pole to the house, and set a new modem up, set new DVR boxes up, you know, got everything new. And it was kind of funny last night. I turned on the kitchen light, and I plugged in the microwave, and I was afraid to turn it on because that would dim the lights. Uh, before and I just <laughs> I was scared to see it dim so I turned the lights on and turned the microwave on nothing it didn't knock out the internet didn't do anything so you know we could sleep better not thinking the house was going to catch on fire and one thing my wife upstairs was plugging a blow dryer man that would knock everything out quick so she's getting ready to use the blow dryer so that's going to be a test uh, my coffee maker used to take it out so I can make coffee now in the morning uh, but yeah that's what it looks like behind your meter and again I say it again and I emphasize this I am not an electrician I paid somebody to come out and do this uh, dealing with 110 I mean you know I can put a receptacle in, I can change, you know, receptacle, I can change the light switch. That kind of stuff I can do. This, when he pulled out his gloves to disconnect the power up at the top, he was explaining those gloves cost him, I don't know, $100, $120, something like that. Because they are 12,000 watt gloves uh, that, you know, he can touch those wires and not get shocked as long as he's got the gloves uh, and doesn't touch the wires together otherwise you blow that transformer off the pole but yeah we got it all fixed and uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how something works uh, the way I understand it you know you people are going to say oh you're stupid you don't know what you're talking about that ain't how it works well, in layman's terms, that's how it works. You know, if you're a certified electrician and I said it wrong, boo-hoo. You know, it, this is how it works. And this is why that neutral wire is very important. But, hope you enjoyed this. This is Joe. Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everybody. We're getting ready to go to Lowe's. <laughs> the favorite Easter spot. Well, happy Easter. Did you blow dry your hair? Yes. Did the internet go out? Well, I don't know if the internet went out, but I turned the light on and it didn't flicker. Oh, wow. Life was yeah. good. I know. You didn't burn the house down. You didn't burn the house down. All right. We're out. <laughs>